This video will cover Flood Series 101 on properly designing and setting up a pure water Flood Series reclaim system and underground tanking. Startup and maintenance, as well as the required components such as pipe connections and electrical connections, will be presented to allow you to better understand the operation of reclaiming water. Pure water does not supply the tanks, but they are typically precast concrete vaults that are sourced locally. There are many different configurations of tanks that are available. Whether they are side by side or in a straight line, the connections and levels will still remain the same. You should also consider the location of the tanks. Try to locate the tanks as close as possible to the reclaim system to minimize the length of the suction line. We also want to keep bends and elbows at a minimum on the suction line. For flood series reclaim systems, we are looking for a required minimum of 3,000 gallons. This can be achieved by using two tanks that are each 1,500 gallons. Most tanks we come across are about 12 feet long, 6 feet deep, and about 6 feet wide. This would allow the inside to be about 5 feet long, 5 feet deep, and about 5 feet wide in each chamber. Using these dimensions, this would give us about 750 gallons per chamber, or 1500 gallons for one tank. Since we are looking for a minimum of 3000 gallons of storage, we would require two tanks, which would give you about 3,000 gallons. Using the example of needing two tanks, the water in this case is entering from the right side and exiting to the left. The water entering the tank on the right side is considered tank 1, followed by tank 2, or referred to as the suction tank. Each tank should have a baffle which creates two compartments per tank. Some tanks may have three baffles, which is okay. The baffles should go from the very top to the very bottom of the tank. This will help separate the solids and keep the floatable material closer to tank one. In between each baffle, an interconnect with a T and an elbow should be placed around mid-level of the water level. This will allow the cleanest water to pass through to each compartment and tank. Connecting the tanks together requires a high level pipe connection with a drop down to the mid water level. This will help with preventing floatable materials from passing through each tank and compartment. All of the plumbing connections should be Schedule 80 PVC. First, we have a connection, typically a 6 inch pipe that is feeding the wash water into the underground tanks. Next we have an interconnect between each compartment and tank. The recirculation line is plumbed to the first tank, second chamber, which is where the sparger is to be mounted. The very last tank is where the suction lines are to be plumbed. A one inch conduit for a low level float and lastly a connection to sewer. Please take note that this line requires a backflow preventer to prevent unwanted sewage from backing up into the reclaimed tanks. The reclaimed system is built on a small footprint. The system measures 4 feet wide, 2 feet deep, and just over 4 feet tall. You should leave a six to seven foot wide clearance for the system and plumbing in the equipment room. The flood series system requires four plumbing connections, a suction line, recirculation line, the underflow, 
and the reclaim water or product water out to the wash applications. All of the reclaimed plumbing should land on the right side of the reclaimed system. This will require about a two foot square area. You will have a suction line, a spare suction line in case there is an issue with the other, a recirculation line, underflow line which is plumbed back to the catch basin or the first tank first chamber, and a conduit for a low level float connection. If a fresh water bypass is ordered with the system, on the wall or close to the reclaim system, you will need a fresh water connection. And lastly, the product water line that will feed reclaim water to your wash applications. Do not reduce this line size until reaching the wash equipment to prevent flow restriction and pressure reduction. The sparger is a device that injects air as the recirculated reclaim water passes through it. This helps to keep the bacterial growth down in the tanks. The sparger should be mounted in the first tank, second chamber. The supplied sparger bracket is to be mounted to the side of the manway. The bottom of the bracket should be mounted about 18 inches above the water line so that the end of the sparger pipe is about 12 inches off the top of the water level. Once this is mounted, the sparger assembly will mount to the tank bracket. Connect the recirculation line to the sparger's 1 inch port with a union for ease of maintenance. The reclaim system is pre-wired and is pretty close to a plug and play design. A single phase connection is required. Three phase power is also required. A low level float connection is simply plugged into the bottom of the control box. You will need at least one activation from the wash to tell the reclaim system you are demanding reclaim water. This can land on any of the two activations. Terminals 1 and 2 are the first activation. Terminals 3 and 4 are the second. You can also wire more than one activation. To review, the single phase power can either be 110 volt AC or 220 volt AC. Three phase power can be 208 slash 230 VAC or 60 VAC or 575 VAC. There is one flow connection and you need at least one voltage activation from the wash. This can be 24 volt DC, 24 volt AC, 110 volt AC or 220 volt AC. The first step in starting up a flood series reclaim system is to ensure all the plumbing connections, such as unions, are snug and tight. Now, loosen the lid on the basket strainer. Now using a garden hose or any fresh water source, fill the basket strainer and suction line until it is at the very top of the housing. Since the suction pipe is not filled, this may take longer than normal. Replace the basket strainer lid and tighten down the dog ear bolts. Next, you need to turn on the red and yellow disconnect switch. You should see the PLC inside the control box light up. Now you will see the red light turn on, saying that the float is down. At this point, plug in the low level float. The pump will start up and you should build up to at least 40 to 60 PSI on the pump. If you don't build up pressure, you may have to reprime the pump again or possibly the pump is spinning backwards. When the pump starts up, you should check the pump rotation. While standing at the back of the motor, looking towards the pump, the shaft should be spinning clockwise. 
If it is not, simply change two of the three phase power lines. The last step is to provide a signal from the car wash to activate the reclaim system. This will ensure that the reclaim water is getting out to the wash equipment. The Pure Water Flood Series maintenance is fairly simple and should not be overlooked. First off, a daily check should be applied to make sure the reclaim system is running and operational. Once a week, the basket strainer needs to be cleaned. Start with turning the red and yellow disconnect off. Remove the basket lid. Pull the basket out and clean it thoroughly. Once the basket is clean, place it back in the housing and with a garden hose or any source of fresh water, fill the basket strainer to the very top. Replace the basket lid and tighten down all the dog ear bolts. Turn the red and yellow disconnect back on and watch the pump pressure. You should build up to at least 40 to 60 PSI on the pump and hold steady. If the pressure drops down to zero, turn the system off and reprime the basket strainer. Once the pump is running, open the underflow ball valve on the bottom of the cyclone to flush out the solids that were spun out and collected. This should be open for at least a minute to ensure all the solids are flushed out. The sparger located in the first tank, second chamber, should be checked once every six months to ensure air is being drawn into it. With the water running through the sparger line, simply place your finger over the air port. You should feel vacuum or suction on your finger. If you don't, you may need to remove and disassemble the sparger to make sure it is not clogged. Once a quarter to every six months, all of the tanks will need to be pumped out and cleaned. This is done to remove the settled solids and oils collected in the tanks. If the tanks are not pumped out, there is potential threat of the reclaim basket clogging and or passing dirty reclaim water out to the wash. Choosing your chemistry while reclaiming water is important. The compatibility with your reclaim water and chemistry should not be overlooked. Two items we do not want in reclaim water are MSO, or mineral seal oil, and silicone from tire shine applications. Please refer to your chemistry provider and discuss your options of using reclaim friendly chemicals. The reclaim system and tanking require the attention of the site work contractors, electricians, plumbers, and general contractors. New Wave Industries is willing to assist in any way possible, but the installation team of contractors is key to getting the tanking, plumbing, and electrical work done correctly. Hopefully this video helped illustrate the requirements of a pure water reclaim system.